All right, looking at the homework on page 132, 1 through 5. This is the homework that follows the, the section on Newton's second and third laws. So, looking at number 1. A 6 kilogram object undergoes an acceleration of 2 meters per square second. What is the magnitude of the net force acting on that object? Well, in simplest ways, we're going to use Newton's second law here. Force equals mass times acceleration. We were given a mass. We were given an acceleration. We're going to multiply the two to get the force. So clearly, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 newtons is our Twelve newtons is our answer. Now let's look at the wording in that problem. What's the magnitude of net force? If an object is to accelerate, it must have a net force acting on it. That's uh, Newton's second law right there. If it's to accelerate, it's got to have a net force acting on it. We've been talking a lot about the the third law, where equal and opposite forces. Imagine you have two different forces perhaps if I can grab an arrow real quick from my shapes here uh, you have two equal or two separate forces a, a push on the right and a push on the left okay on this here pumpkin pilgrim pumpkin thing well the the push from the right is on the pumpkin is gonna have an, an equal and opposite force that is the pumpkin pushes back on whatever that is and the push from the other side here is going to have an equal and opposite force. I think I said the wrong direction earlier. Anyway, this is your Newton's third law. This is your third law, force pair. This is your third law, force pair. But we don't really care when we're doing a what is the net force on this object kind of thing. These guys are not a big deal. We're talking about force from the left on the pumpkin, force from the right on the pumpkin. Okay, and we would see that because the force from the left is larger than the force from the right, there would be a net force, just as in this problem. There's a net force on uh, whatever, just an object in the question. That's why it accelerates. Okay, part B then says, if the same force is applied to a 4 kilogram object, what is the acceleration it produces? So the same force, 12 newtons, applied to a 4 kilogram instead of a 6. Mm -hmm. Change this to 4 real quick. A 4 kilogram out instead of 6. So 12 newtons, F equals ma, 12 newtons equals mass of 4 kilograms times acceleration a. Now if you are solving this algebraically, if you are solving this, you're going to, have to divide the mass over 12 divided by 4 gives you an acceleration of 3, I'm not typing out the unit because it takes too long, 3 meters per square second. All right. Number two, a child causes a wagon to accelerate by pulling with a horizontal force. Newton's third law says that the wagon exerts an equal and opposite force on the child. How can the wagon possibly accelerate? Um, it says draw a diagram to help you out. If you were to draw this with this wagon, here, I'm going to draw a wagon, and I'm going to put wheels on it, wagon, and I'm going to put a handle, and I'm going to have a kid, right? Little little stick figure kid here. Okay, so I got a kid with no neck. Not that I care. What it's saying is, if if the kid pulls on the wagon the same as the wagon pulls on the kid along the, the arm there, how does it move? That force is not the one that's in question. Resistance forces, perhaps at the wheels, compared to the, let's call them action forces, at the feet. If the kid's you know, action force of trying to go forward is stronger than the resistance at the wheels, then it will move. It's not that there aren't force pairs acting here, force pairs acting there, force pairs acting there. 
these do not have to equal those. So if the kid pulling down here exceeds the resistances here, you will have a net force, net external force, you could say, and the wagon will move. Number three, identify the force pairs. So a person takes a step. I would probably, one thing when you do force pairs, you're going to use the same words twice. So I'm going to say something like foot on the ground and ground on the foot for a person takes a step. A snowball hits someone in the back. So you're going to say something along the lines of snowball on person, person on snowball. Because the person exerts a force on the snowball just the same. A baseball player catches a ball. So ball on mitt, mitt on ball. And D, a gust of wind strikes a window. Remember, wind is moving air. So uh, wind on window, and then window on wind. That sounds goofy. Number four. The forces acting on a sailboat are 390 newtons to the north and 180 newtons to the east. If the boat, including the crew, has a mass of 270 kilograms, what is the magnitude and direction of the boat's acceleration? Okay, let me just uh, clear this stuff out for a second. So we're talking about we've got one force vector going north and we've got a second force vector going east. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem and figure out the diagonal of those two. So the boat is actually going to be accelerating in this direction. Even though, you know, perhaps we've got wind at the back and a current to the side. You know, they don't specify, so that's not a big deal. So use Pythagorean theorem and calculate that with 390. Let's, let's put that in here. 390 newtons. And then up here, 180 newtons. That's the first thing to do is just take those, take those two vectors and figure out what the hypotenuse vector is. That's our first, our first bet. Calculate that real fast if you haven't done it already. All right, I just calculate that, and I've got about 430. Um, so using that, I'm going to type that in right here. 400. Oop. Let's put in 430 right here. 430 newtons. Now, now that we know the net force acting on the boat, we can take the mass of the boat and find the acceleration. So then we're going to go F equals MA, and you're going to put here, of course you're going to say equals 270 kilograms times A. And of course, that's hard to see, so we'll just kind of drag that all over there. 270 kilograms on uh, A, and then you're going to divide 430 by 270. Calculator. 430 divided by 270 equals 16.4 meters per square second. That does not sound at all right. I hit the button wrong. Try that again. I must have put 27. 430 divided by 2. Seven zero equals aha. I, I don't know what I hit. So one point six. One point six meters per square second for four. Number five. If a small sports car hits head on with a massive truck, which one has a greater impact force? Well, the force on the car on the truck is equal to the force of the truck on the car. So those forces will be equal. Which one will have greater acceleration? Ah, the car will have a much greater acceleration because the, if the forces are equal, the car's mass is definitely much smaller. Therefore, the car's acceleration has to be much larger. Same with the truck. With the much larger mass, the acceleration must be small. All right. 